weekly visit with the voice of baseball in Boston, Lou Merloni. He'll join us on the Harbor One Hotline. But Lou is sponsored by McFarland Energy, the heating, cooling, and bioheat delivery pros, the Eastern Mass, and all of Cape Cod depend on McFarlandEnergy.com by the E.L. Harvey companies, including Nosset and Mega Disposal, your local trash collection and recycling providers, and by Aviva Trattoria, Italian-inspired, locally made from fresh, whole, locally sourced ingredients, to our friend Lou Merloni on the Harbor One Hotline. Good morning, Lewis. How are you? I'm good. And, you know, I always chuckle, like, when you guys throw that what in there after Alex Cora kind of yeah. asked me about a question. <laughs> it's sort of like, what? I'm not interested, but go ahead. <laughs> on Good on Good Friday, we have Angry Lou. Uh, after a Red ooh. Sox win, Lou, I was the pessimist. I went with the... Uh, I went with the Marlins in the uh, the Marlins. I went with the Mariners in the uh, parlay last night, and the Red Sox go out and uh, get a six four win. What was your biggest takeaway from last night? Yeah, they're going to win about one hundred and five games this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're biggest looking for takeaway more checks. is that yeah, like last year's team would have given up two or three more runs in the exact same ball game because defensively you don't turn to double play in the first inning. A run scored. There's a man on second or a man on first with two outs. There's a double in the gap. And Bayo in the first inning of the first game of the year is down 2 nothing. Instead, your shortstop turns to double play, you know, which is what big leaguers do. And your second baseman turns to double play. You know, and there was, there was other ones, too. That were, that were, like Valdez made a great play to his left. Like, defensively, last year's team would have lost this baseball game. And it would have been the exact same people on the field. And the exact same thing would have played out. And the athleticism was the other thing that stood out, like just on the base pass, running, stealing. It's just a different, younger vibe type team, more athletic. And that was a fun one to watch last night. Yeah, so not to get all caught up in, you know, the emotions and the high that comes with an opening day win, um, but it basically feels like everything you were saying coming out of training camp, uh, spring training, which – I think it was pretty optimistic. Like, uh, I'm not going to paraphrase that you thought that this team is going to be better than people are giving them credit for based on what you saw. Yeah, and, and last night was just a little sample of it. It's just small, but that's just kind of what we saw. And then, and listen, the biggest concern is depth, you know? And then I just, I gotta, even before the game, I'm like, you know, what if guys do stay healthy and depth all of a sudden isn't like an issue? You know, what can they be? And it's unrealistic, you know? Um, but the question is, can they stay in it? You know, can they stay healthy enough uh, and then see what Breslow or the ownership kind of feels like at, at the deadline because there's been so much inactivity the last couple of years to help this squad out. But, um, it, listen, it's a good team. It's not a roster anybody should pick to win the World Series or anything, but their outfield flies. Like, guys are moving around defensively. There's, you know, so it's just a different, I don't know, energy like kind of around it, right? Youth and athleticism. Lou, it's not the kind of F.E. as Fourier would have referred to, right? Is it false? Yeah. In, it's not the false enthusiasm. These guys seem to be really buying in. And, and, and part of that, too, though, is like, that's why last night was kind of really big to even buy into it even more, right? Like, to buy what everyone's t selling, you know, like kind of to fall into that vibe of, like, Bayo can handle it. And then he goes out and wasn't sharp, but still threw the ball, you know, gave him a chance to win. That that Devers is a different animal. That O'Neal can can really help this team. That defensively story is a difference maker. That, you know, we're a different team. Trust us. And to go out and win game one helps with the buy-in. Like, I think they buy in, but they just got to see it too, right? So, listen, it's one game, okay? But I tell you, it's been a core. I had no idea. Core is 0-5 on opening days. That's his first win as a manager in the big leagues on opening day. Guy usually opens up the season 0-1, so that felt good. Uh, Lou, when you look at Rafi Devers, and maybe I'm just noticing it more now because it was a, a regular season game, uh, that stance looks different. I went and did some digging. He changed it a while back. What do you make of the tweaks of Devers' batting stance heading into this year? Well, the, the hands were way over the head. And there was just a lot of movement. And when he brought his hands back to a hitting position, sometimes his body would go towards the pitcher and, his, and he left his hands behind him, if, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And what that creates is a very long swing. And what that creates is him swinging through fastballs and getting blown away by 93 down the middle. We all shake our head. Uh, like, 
and, and it makes his swing decisions earlier. So he chases more in the dirt, all these things. Now, where his hands are now, it's like almost already in a hitting position. So there's less movement. He can see the ball longer. He's making better decisions. And that's why the first at bat surprised me because I didn't see that much in camp. I was almost like, they're going to challenge Devers on top of the zone, and they're going to realize the swing and miss isn't there that we didn't see in camp. And actually his first at bat, he was blown away with a fastball up. And I'm like, huh. And, of course, his next at bat, Castillo tried the same thing, and he launched it to opposite field. So left center approach to – there's just a big difference with him and just a more mature kid. The contract kicks in this year. He's now a 30-plus million dollar player. I think he realizes it, but he looks really good offensively. He looks like a machine right now. So um, he actually – he also – I mean, because I'm always calling him fat and out of shape. He actually looked like he's in good shape. Um, I mean, that wasn't – I mean, a cosign on that. I don't know. Who knows if he can keep it up, but he doesn't look sloppy. You know, he's kind of like Ortiz, Christian, because like every year I'd be like, wow, David looks fat. You know, and you're like, <laughs> how about he's just big? Yeah. Like he's, He's big. He moves well, like that double. Like yeah. once he gets going, he can run. He's athletic. Like he posts, he plays. Like he's just a big dude. It's just it is what it is. Yeah. You know? Just blame his genetics. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll accept that. Um, the other thing you mentioned the athleticism in, in the outfield. They also stole three bases, which was uh, probably a good sign. I don't know where they where they rank uh, yeah. right now in in week one. Uh, sorry, in uh, the first opening day. But the Duran situation. He's three quarters of the way home. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know, remember what inning it was, but it. Why didn't he just keep going? Like, what? What was that about? Well, I think he was regretting it. He saw like after the inning, they were talking about, "I should have gone. I should have gone." Um, I don't know. It's a unique play. You don't see it every day, right? The short third baseman was playing well over shortstop, allowed him to get way off, and and he could have won. But here's the key. Here's the one thing that is interesting. There was two strikes on Casas. So even if Duran goes, and the ball's over the plate and he's safe, it's strike three. So, you know, like, it's a tough count to do it in because Tristan still has two strikes. So, you know what I mean? Like, if he kind of quick pitches and throws to the plate to try to panic and it's over the plate, he might be safe, but it's strike three inning over. Is that an so indi- it was just a weird time to do it. Yeah, Lou, I was going to say, is that an indicator that the base running – still needs to kind of come along for this group. I know they stole three bags last night, and some of that is really pitch clock and situational. Do you think this will be a better base running group, or is that maybe an indication that there's still a ways to go? Yeah, no, I don't think that's like that was like a negative. You know, I would have liked to have seen him do it just to kind of set a tone, you know, like this is the way we're playing. Like, you know what I mean? You can, mm-hmm. Whatever you give us, we're going to take it. Make so, the aggressive like, mistake, bad- right, yeah. That's not a that's not a mistake in my mind though. You know, Nick, like, oh my god, I can't believe Durant didn't steal home. Like their awful base running team. Like you would never say that. Like it's just an opportunity to let teams know we're gonna continue to try to put pressure on you. Um I think the athleticism is gonna make them a better base running team, but you also don't want to run, run around like a bunch of idiots, you know, and running into outs too. So you gotta kinda control it. So Lou, so uh before last night's game, did you have a win total in your head? Yeah, and unfortunately, it's probably like in that like 83, 84 range to where a couple injuries to the rotation could bounce them back to the low to mid-70s. Okay, so, so it's kind of, so you know what I mean? Where are you landing? Where where did you land on officially? Because my, my question is, like, based on, would you change it based on seeing the first game of the season? Well, I, I always felt like they could, you know, 84 is about right. Listen, that team last year won 78 games, and they went 12 and 24. They died down the stretch. You know, they were, you know, you're talking about the third week of August. They were on pace for 86, 87, 88 wins. So um, I think the depth is just kind of what bites them. But, again, if guys do stay healthy, if you do see Garrett Whitlock the way he threw in camp, I, I still comfortably put it around 83, 84 wins. Lou, when do we start hearing players complain more about the uh, the new MLB jerseys from uh, Nike and Fanatics? I'm, I'm, I don't know why. I'm not a big uniform guy. But I yeah. saw uh, a lot of people across the country kind of writing about, Ugh, gotta gotta real look at these new uniforms, and uh, I could understand why, you know, they're see through or the players maybe didn't love them or anything like that. I don't know. What do you make? Is that a big deal or not? I think Gresh, I, th- I think that's like a spring training thing. You know what I mean? Like you know, maybe like in in camp or something with football players and stuff like that. But when the season starts, it's like, dude, I, I got other crap to worry about. 
other than whether my name is too small on my back of my jersey. Is that really? You know yeah, so, is that really what it is, or is it? Uh, you know, they look a little snug on some guys. Well, they're always going to be snug on some people, but it's like the see-through thing. I think you deal with it, right? I don't know. You take the leopard sliders and you put those in the trash. Well, maybe you don't, <laughs> just because you want to show off a little something. something. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Jake Taylor, yeah. So, Lou, yeah. how much baseball did you watch yesterday? Did you watch a lot, or were uh, you like doing the old aquarium thing, uh, like uh, was, Cora was doing, uh, catching fish? No, I didn't. I didn't. You know, I watched like I think it was like that Yankee game, Houston game was on, so I watched a little bit of that. But yeah. it was. It was a long day, dude. I was up at like 5.30. I'm like, the game's in 17 hours or 15 hours. Like, what the hell am I going to do all day? Yeah, because, kind of you know, that too. yeah, there is that hotel. I don't know where you guys are staying. And this is even my question, though, but that where you can literally fish outside your window. I don't know if you, I don't know where are you guys uh, staying, right? There's there's a couple uh, hotels right on the water. That, that close. Yeah, we're not that close to the water, but luckily for me, we are close to a Nordstrom because I just got word that my bag is not Oh, there you go. And I won't yeah. have it oh, wait a minute. Forgot about we that. have a travel issue, Lou? Oh, you didn't hear about this? No, I missed this. I was getting my uh, teeth is done this, or whatever. Is I, this kind of like a loop? Is this kind of like Zoots when they lost your stuff there, Lou? Yeah, quick quick little summary, yeah, summary of it. Like the bag miscommunication was put on the bus back to Boston before a 10-day road trip. It was going to get shipped out to Seattle. Remember, and, and the text last night was, hey, have you heard about the issue with the bridge in Maryland? And I knew I was screwed. <laughs> I knew I was screwed. Oh. So now I got like six more days trying to live off of what I have. So it's, I may have to do some more shopping. I was going to say, uh, you were a former player, and I know it might make you feel like, you know, a poser or whatever, but can't you get a, can't you get like a Red Sox warm up just to, kind of roam around in until whatever clothes you need to put on that you can then look like an adult? Like, can't they give you some stuff to kind of help you out a little bit? You're framing him, Lou, for God's sakes. I, I guess they could. I mean, you know, luckily here in Seattle, it's it's kind of like, you know, covered and, you know, it's not that cold. But, you know, San Fran, like this time of year, it's not exactly very warm at night. So I just need a coat. I'm good. So, so Lou, you if you – okay, for, so if you got free time, right, so go to Pike's Market, yeah. right, and go ahead and see if they'll throw you some fish. Well, that's always the, the cheesy, tersey thing to do, which I'm sure you – have you ever yeah. done that before? Yeah, the, the fish thing is, is awesome. You know, like last year my kid came with me and I told him we had to go down, had to go down. So we go down and literally they threw a couple fishes and he looked at me and he's like, you brought me down here to watch a man throw a fish to another fish? <laughs> uh, I used to love that. 13, he's just like, seriously? He's like, what's so cool about this? Can we go look at the gum wall? I'm like, okay. Wait, the what Whatever. wall? The gum wall? There's like yeah, they got a wall here. It's like if you chew gum, you just stick it up against the wall. It's like the most disgusting thing oh. you ever see, but like it's packed. Everyone takes pictures in front of it. Did you sign your piece of gum that you <laughs> left up there? Yeah. No, I actually took one off the wall and chewed it and walked home. Oh, that's a boy. That's a boy. Good job. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Freak everybody out. That's, oh, uh, that is disgusting. That's what we Get like. Get yourself some Hubba Bubba. Get you about three or four pieces of the, the good stuff and then chew that stuff and then throw it on there. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Lou, oh, did, you, uh, did you have any golf planned this week with uh, Longshanks yeah. Fleming? or Oh, so are you now, uh, you now compromised? Yeah. Because you don't have the proper golf attire? Because that's an expensive buy. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm compromised. There's no question about it. But if you think it's going to stop me, I got <laughs> I got something to say about that. Because I have no problem renting. I have an opportunity to play golf tomorrow. I will. I have an opportunity to play in San Fran. I will. And I'm still going to enjoy myself. Hey, and then tonight for dinner uh, or in tomorrow, Red Sox, in Red go Sox to, cutoffs. yeah, you'll be wearing like Cora's uniform. <laughs> Look, I'm a coach. No, I'm a player. Oh, you can't tell. Give me a pair of game pants. Yeah, they gave me an extra pair of game pants. They're see-through, so I'm just going to go commando. There you go. I'm just going to go on the course and roll with it. Yeah, and hit up El Gaucho tonight. <clears throat> Who? El Gaucho, the restaurant I keep telling you to go to. Go to El Gaucho. Every restaurant you tell me to go to has been closed for two years. It's, this one's open. You can't even get through it. You can't even get through it. You're laughing already. My God. I mean, poor Lou. You, why are you trying to? Now, see, you're not being a good brother right now. Hey, you're not. Me. 
He's I, I, like you're you're struggling. They left oh, your bag. Fine. They left your bag somewhere. You now got to go to Nordstrom's and spend unnecessarily uh, unnecessary money, especially to be able to hit the golf course. And meanwhile, you're trying to send him to the seedy side of town no, for a, a burger. It's, it's a great restaurant. Look it up, yeah. Lou. And then next week, I want to report El Gaucho. Yeah, luckily, I look up everything, all your recommendations, and they're usually. Like closed. That's happened once. Good. Mm -hmm. When you were in San Diego, it it's, happened once. It's happened twice, I think. Okay, it's uh, happened twice. Uh, I've been around for one. <laughs> of I them. promise you, it won't happen a third time. <laughs> okay, I'll look into it. Yeah, I'll good steak. Uh, Lou, thanks, friend. We appreciate it. Uh, stay on the grind out there, and uh, hopefully, uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe W E E I. Maybe uh, Ken Laird down the hall will send some. W-E-E-I gear to the hotel in Oakland, and you'll have a package oh there waiting. Just expense it, Lou. Yeah. Oh, no, trust me. I know. That's why they couldn't sign Montgomery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Uh, Thanks, buddy. We'll see, right, you, see you, Lou. Lou. All right, guys. Later. There you go. There goes uh, look up. our I'm guy, Lou you, El Gaucho is still open. I don't they know. They are. They open at 4 o'clock today. Okay, I'm telling you. That's the one I got right. That's uh, the you, only thing. There was thing. another place in Seattle you told them was. Yeah. yeah, that yeah, was yeah. Cool. And then there That's was fine. the one in San Francisco that I think you knew. The Mitchell Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great. You even tried to suck me in on that I to know. get uh, sell it to him and stuff. <laughs> he knows about it, though. Poor bastard. Anyone who's played any sport professional sport in san francisco knows all about mitchell brothers there might be nothing worse than the whole going on the road to work and your bag's gone Bad i like your idea people. just listen hey uh alex could you hook me up with some like yeah get uni? some no seriously some cleats go get some gear no spikes like, this is what i would do i'd be like come on man i like they they got my bag give me a warm-up or whatever just to bang around it and then i call my wife and be like listen yeah. give me this this and this Throw it in a box, yeah. ship it to this hotel, yep. overnight it, I'll have it by Monday, and then Easy. you're okay. I just can't believe you didn't know about the gum wall playing in Seattle for all those years. I know. That's got to be new. It says it. I just looked it up because I Who's got to bring existed. that up? It started in the 90s. Oh, really? Did it really? The yeah. gum wall? In the I kingdom? Have... No, not at the kingdom. It's got to no, no, be no, down no. at like like Place Market. It's got to be oh, down. Oh, it's got to be sorry. downtown Seattle. And... It's in the Pike Place Market. Yeah. Okay, that's right where they throw the fish. So it's got to be somewhere in that vicinity. I have never, I've never been heard, to Seattle because I would have been there. Absolutely, I would yeah. have been right in the middle of it. And like you know, oh, that is disgusting. Oh, that is kind of gross. That now that disgusting. I see the photo, uh, for those watching on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Boston WEI. Nice picture with a dog in front of it, though. The uh, gum wall. Ugh. Just, just the picture, Coop, is all we need. That is just. Nasty. Gumball started in the 90s when local... Uh, I was reading yeah, okay. Coopage uh, scrolled down on Somebody that Somebody left. That is pretty freaking gross. Just disgusting. Gumball started in the 90s when local patrons and performers at Unexpected Productions. That sounds sketch. That's the underground grunge crew right yeah, there. That's yeah, that's what it is. Let's be different. Yeah, yeah. I, wonder what other, I wonder what other kind of movies might have been made there, if you know what I mean. Stick their used gum on the wall. Just gross. Just gross. Oh, they're an improv group. Oh, apparently. okay. Well, look at us. We're safe. They've called different. Pike Place.